Hi and welcome back to yet another video on Let's Talk About It. So um, we have a, a issue going on between Ukraine and Russia and as a uh, consequence of this the EU have now um, sanctioned and banned Sputnik and RT Media um, in the whole of the EU and I think um, the UK are looking at doing the same and I just want to play you this clip by um, is it Rachel Rachel Blevins and she's a journalist reporter presenter who works for RT Media now RT Media are a Russian um, funded media outlet so I'll just play you this uh, clip now I have received more hateful comments and messages and death threats in the last five days than I have in the last five years. And so I wanted to take a moment to come on here and to address a few things. Many of those comments surround the fact that I work for RT. And of course, the latest new trend is to call for banning RT in countries like the United States and across Europe. Now, I can only speak for myself, of course, but I think it's important to note that one of the main reasons why I work for RT is because it gives me the opportunity to cover stories that the mainstream media will not cover and does not want to talk about. And I don't take that lightly. If you followed me for any amount of time, you know how passionate I am about a number of the stories that I've had the chance to cover at RT. And I know that a lot of you have taken to social media in recent days and you've posted about how you stand with Ukraine, you've condemned Russia. But my question to you is, why are you doing that? Are you doing that because that's what everyone else on social media is doing? Are you doing that because when you turn on any sort of mainstream media coverage, you see that that's what they're doing? So is that then why you're not talking about the civilians in Yemen, Somalia, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan? Is that why you don't care what the United States government is doing, what it is funding in other countries, the bombs that it is dropping? Is it because social media doesn't care and it's not cool to get online and to say that you stand with the civilians of Yemen who are facing the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. And then you send hateful messages to people like me who say something that doesn't align with the status quo. Because I can tell you right now that I've never been told by RT what I should or shouldn't say. I've never been told that I needed to follow any sort of narrative. And that's why I work for the network that I work for. Do you ever take the time to stop and think about the fact that when it comes to all of these mainstream networks, to these publications who you're believing whenever they talk about RT or Russia or Ukraine, or the entire situation that's unfolding right now, you believe what they have to say about that. Yet those are the exact same networks that sold you weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They were the ones who told you that at any point the United States was winning the Afghanistan war. They were the ones who told you that there were chemical attacks in Syria, that the Obama administration was just arming and training moderate rebels. They were the ones who sold you the justification for the United States continuing to increase its defense budget year after year. And yet all of those times when they were wrong and they either didn't issue retractions or they just kind of put out little statements to justify what they were saying, to justify those anonymous U.S. intelligence officials they continue to quote. Did you just shrug it off then? Did you just say, oh, we'll move on to the next story, but RT is the real problem here. Oh, maybe the mainstream media didn't get this major story or that major story right. Maybe the stories they posted led to the loss of life for thousands of innocent people, but that's okay because at least they're here to criticize RT. I at least they're here to call for banning a network that says something contrary to the mainstream narrative here in the United States, because that's really going to fix the problem. I mean, do you ever think about that when you're writing your hateful comments, when you're being critical of RT, a network you probably only Googled and read the most basic Wikipedia entry about? Do you ever think about the fact that when you're criticizing someone like me, when you're telling me that I don't deserve to live in this country, that I don't deserve to be an American, do you ever sit there and do you think about the fact that that freedom of speech that you champion so much when you talk about how free this country is that you don't think that I should be allowed to have it in the exact same way that you should. Okay, well that's not the the whole clip. I will leave a link to the whole clip in the, um, the description of the video if, if you want to watch all of it. But this just highlights how um, the mainstream media in the West are trying to silence alternative voices. It's very easy in these times to say this is Russian propaganda and we saw the same happen 
last year with the UK um, trying to stop uh, CGTN, which is um, a media outlet in China, trying to uh, who who broadcast it abroad, and you know it, it, this is this is from nations who claim they are the um, bastions of, of free speech. Um, but in fact, all they're trying to do is, is silence an alternative opinion, an alternative voice. And, you know, it, 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 it sort of conditions their people. It, it, it's almost like mind control because the, the only um, media that, that these, these citizens in these European countries will now have is overwhelmingly Western media, which in my opinion will be very biased um, I, I, I'm a strong believer in that a lot of Western media has there's a lot more control by governments and intelligent and intelligence agencies um, more than that's let on. And I also noticed that um, YouTube uh, came out yesterday saying they've demonetized um, also RT and although uh, people will say oh it just means they can't earn money from these channels it also means that YouTube won't push them as much so they won't be get they won't be seen by as many people and i think this is pretty dangerous you know i think it's um i think it's a uh, an issue especially from countries that claim they are as i say the the sort of beacon of, of free speech so it'd be interesting to see if the u.s follows suit in this i'd love to know what your thoughts and comments are so please leave um, your thoughts and comments down below in the comments section. Um, but as always, for now, take care.